So now we've looked at how to get a point estimate of the population mean by using the sample mean. But this feels somehow underdone. If I take many samples, I could get many different estimates of the population mean. But I don't really want just one of these estimates. I want a range of possible values. It's time to meet the confidence interval. The formula to calculate the 95% confidence interval for the mean of data that is normally distributed is this. Let's break this down. X bar is the sample mean. The T term is a cutoff point to ensure that our interval has the proper confidence. More on that soon. S is the sample standard deviation and N is the sample size. To illustrate, I'll calculate the 95% confidence interval for city fuel efficiency in the MPG dataset. To get this, we put T equals 1.96 in our formula, which gives this. So that's a 95% confidence interval for mean city fuel efficiency. But the question remains, what do I mean by confidence? To illustrate, I've simulated a population that's normally distributed with a population mean of 10. I then took a sample of size 10 and calculated the 95% confidence interval for the population mean using the formula I just showed you. I repeated this process again and again. Here are the first five results. Now here's a plot to visualise these confidence intervals. Each line is a sample, with the dot representing the sample mean and the lines giving the 95% confidence interval. The red line is the truth, a population mean of 10. So how many of the confidence intervals got it right? How many have the true value lying between the lower and upper endpoints? In this simulation, 95 of the confidence intervals contain the real value of 10. They're the blue lines, while the remaining five don't. They're the red lines. This is what we mean by confidence. If you repeat this procedure lots of times, then on average, 95% of them will contain the true value.